Hi everybody, I'm Chef Nicholas Lodge and excited to bring this second in the series of CSA uh, dusting powder tutorials. In this particular video, I'm going to show you how to use in many different ways the highlighter collection. So here we have the highlighters come in different packaging sizes, all right? I'm going to focus on the gold, the silver, and the rose gold, which is a very popular trend color at the moment. Um, also, there's copper and bronzes and other um, shades as well. And usually you would start off, um, this applies to the fondant, the gum paste, the royal icing, um, basically whatever application you're using this on, with uh, when you do things in gold, you always want to start off with yellow. When you do things in silver, you want to start off with gray. Now, gray I've achieved with like rainbow dust, have a pro gel gray, um, that's a beautiful gray. Uh, you could also use just a little bit of black as well, uh, but a gray color. And then when you do rose golds and the copper and bronzes, I started with a peach color, all right? Um, this gives you a foundation. And uh, so then now obviously the foundation can be used for um, obviously doing the different colors. So when you're using the highlighter, of course, sometimes we might be talking about using this for a decorative element on a cake, like a brooch. Um, it might be, for example, to use for um, like the whole tier of a cake, gold or silver or metallic. Um, it might be for some lettering. Um, so I'm gonna talk about those different um, situations as we go through the uh, different uh, techniques and, and uses for the highlighters. Now, when we're using the highlighter, we're going to, I'm going to show you several different ways of using this. The first way I'm gonna show you is obviously talking about as a dry powder and then using vegetable shortening, almost like a gilding wax technique in craft. So here we're gonna go and show you this now. Powders, generally metallics, I wouldn't recommend using dry, okay? Because if you rub them on dry, it's gonna be very uneven. I'm sure some of you have experienced that even with pearl dust when you do a large surface area, trying to get it even. Um, and uh, so generally powder, I don't usually use the metallic powder dry. Um, and so when you use the powder, I'm gonna show you the silver. So first of all, you want to usually just cover your work surface because uh, you don't want to obviously get the powder. But if you should get powder on like a plastic surface or laminate surface, a rolling pin, just use a little bit of vegetable shortening and uh, then use um, obviously a sort of paper towel and that will get it off. Um, now the powder comes, this is the largest one. This is, uh, this is 28.5 grams, all right? So this is obviously a large container. So we have several different options there. Actually, this is the 28.5 one and then this is large one here, which is like a two ounce container. And uh, you're gonna use a little bit of the powder you can put it onto a little dish, um, and especially when I show you some of the other ways of painting with this, with the oil and with the glaze, especially with the oil method, you could then just put this into a zip top bag and then you can just reuse that next time you need, just add some more oil to it. So if you try and put the powder on dry, if you put the powder on dry to the, to the, um, to the piece, so like for example here, just showing you some silver on the silver, you don't really get, it's a little bit uneven, and you're not gonna get really, as I said, a nice metallic look to it, all right? So generally speaking, I wouldn't really recommend using the powders dry, personally, okay? What I'll sometimes do is I take a brush. Now, generally, I would just keep a brush for this purpose. This is just a little craft brush, but because we're gonna use vegetable fat or shortening on this, the oil is gonna penetrate into the bristles, so I generally just wash this with some dish soap and just keep it for this purpose. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna take just a little tiny bit of vegetable shortening, and I'm just gonna put a little tiny, tiny bit of that onto a dish. Now this is very similar to in craft when we do sometimes like a frame, we use gilding wax. So gilding wax is almost like a metallic shoe polish type of consistency. So we're gonna create that same sort of effect. So I'm using very, very little of the shortening, and I'm just mixing this with the metallic like this. And you see then when you paint this onto the but you see how beautiful that will give you the, the silver. So this is gonna give you the gray. But the reason why I would always start off with the yellow or the gray or the peachy color is that if you, especially when you're painting sometimes jewelry pieces, like if you were doing something like, say this brooch, which would be used like for the middle of a cake, if you have any little areas you miss, it's not gonna notice if you do it in gray. But also it's gonna give you much more depth of color because when you paint or you use this on white, it's not gonna have the same effect. If I just show you here, just using this white on the, but you see how you don't have the same sort of depth. 
of, of, the, of the silver, you see? So if we had gray underneath there, you get much more depth and it sort of evens out the whole thing, all right? So you won't get that sort of, uh, that inconsistency with your, with your depth of color. So that is using like dry brush with just a little tiny, tiny bit of vegetable shortening. You can also use coconut oil. Um, you can also use high ratio shortening. All right, and then I say, when I clean my brush there, all I would do then is I would just literally take a little bit of dish soap, some washing up liquid, and then just obviously clean the brush and just mark that for uh, using with the shortening because it's difficult to get all the oil out of the bristles. So then if you try to use that for dusting with dry powders on flowers, for example, you're gonna probably mess them up. So that is using, um, as I said, the, the uh, dry brush method, all right? And of course that would apply also to the rose gold color and also to the gold color as well, all right? So that is obviously the first, the first technique here um, I'm showing you, okay? Now, next technique I'm going to use is going to be to use um, oil. And I want to just talk about, first of all, a lot of, a lot of tutorials you will watch on YouTube and different tutorials. A lot of people use vodka, a lot of people use Everclear, a lot of people use lemon extract. Now, lemon extract um, is basically high grain alcohol, so this is really made, and if you look at the ingredients here, it's actually 90% alcohol. So this is made with a, a high grain or high alcohol content, like for example, Everclear brand is a popular brand. So this is, uh, will evaporate very quickly. Vodka obviously doesn't have as high alcohol content, and if you're just using Everclear, the thing I personally don't like with using like Everclear vodka or the lemon extract is the fact that the lemon extract of the vodka or the Everclear will leave the silver metallic very streaky. Now on my first video I did for CSA, I used the lemon extract with pearl dust and that is what I usually use because when you're painting with pearl dust, what happens is the alcohol, the 90% alcohol in here will evaporate and then it leaves the lemon oil, which is gonna give your luster dust, your pearl dust, that nice luster look, like I showed on some cookies and things. But when I'm painting with metallics, all right, um, I usually use uh, other options. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is using um, citrus oil. Now, this is, just gives you an idea about, sort of like, this is peppermint oil, this is lemon oil. So you can use different types of oils. Like if you um, were doing this for the holidays on something, you could use peppermint oil. But generally, for most of the time, I would use a orange oil. This is, for example, an artificial orange oil. This is a CK brand, this is Loran oil brand. This is natural orange oil, this is artificial. But what I'm doing here, it doesn't matter, okay? Now, companies like Loran have little tiny droppers that go into the, um, obviously they go into the uh, little bottle. If you're using a large bottle like this, what I would suggest doing is put that into a dropper, dropper bottle like this type of bo bottle here. So you could just put that into a dropper bottle and obviously use that, okay? Um, so anyway, so when you use um, oil, now the advantage of oil is it is good for a large surface area, okay? So if you were, doing, for example, a whole cake. Now, if you're going to paint a whole cake, all right, remember this is generally used in the, um, on the label it says for decorative use only. So generally, I personally would only use this for things that are going to, could be removed by a customer or client if they wanted to. Something like a happy birthday, if you're doing, for example, like a brooch, if you're doing sugar flowers, which you're not gonna eat anyway, you could paint those metallic, you could put metallic on the edge. But if you're using, if you had a customer who wanted a whole metallic tear, um, what I would do is I would suggest doing that as a dummy cake. So you'd actually use a dummy cake, like let's say for example an eight inch round dummy, cover it with gray, yellow or peach fondant, paint it with the gold silver or the rose gold. And then you would then have a comparable cutting cake, like for example, a quarter sheet, half sheet cake in the kitchen, depending on the size of your cake you're doing as a dummy. And that would then be used as a, to serve, okay? Because if somebody was served a whole slice of cake, which was completely metallic on the outside, that is not, uh, not something you should be consuming, all right? But in very small amounts, this is somebody was to eat part of a happy birthday, it's not going to be harmful, it's just in large quantities, okay? In some countries, like for example, in Europe, this silver um, is class silver, gold, and that is inedible, okay? Because in Europe, generally something is called inedible or edible. So if it has a nutritional value, it's classed as edible. Now here, I'm using a little dropper, and I'm gonna just take some of, the, um, some of the orange up from here, some of the orange oil, and I will add this to, the, to here. 
Now again, so when you finish with this, you can actually, and you can just leave that in the bottle, you can take your brush here, and see, so when you paint with this, and you can use like a toothpick just to stop that move in. So you see how, but see the total difference in here. You see how beautiful that looks? And here using the orange oil. But what it is, unlike the vodka or the Everclear or the lemon extract, it won't go on streaky, okay? But you see how you have such a beautiful, and you see, so the thing is, is that even with the um, silver, and I want to just show you with the silver on the other end of the dish, you know, you can see here the silver that we did with the, um, with the shortening. See, it's a little bit dull, okay? If you do this with the oil, so here with the oil, just gonna take that. But you can see, you can see the difference between what the, how the oil really, as I said, changes the whole overall look of that, you see? So you see it's the same powder, but you can see the huge difference between silver with the shortening, which is a little bit dull, okay, more like a sort of, as I said, a, a sort of a gilding wax, and here this beautiful metallic. Now, each of the things I'm going to talk about have limitations and things you need to take into consideration, all right? When you use orange oil um, or citrus oil, and I said you can use orange oil, lemon oil, lime oil, Loran have several different oils. Um, but generally speaking, you wouldn't use, like, for example, olive oil or vegetable oil, but just a flavoring oil. But I said you could use peppermint oil as well, could be used. Now, the downside with this technique, all right, is this technique, if you're handling these pieces, you either need to put on latex or vinyl gloves, or alternatively, you would use a pair of tweezers, okay? Because the natural oil we have in our skin, if you pick this up with your fingers, you'll actually will take the gold or silver off. You leave it to dry a little bit, but when I'm putting this onto a cake, I would just literally use tweezers, bead in tweezers, or as I said, you'd put on gloves. And with gloves, once it's dry, you can handle it and the gold or silver won't come off. Now, of course, if you're talking about painting a drape or a bow on a cake, or you're talking about having um, a cake completely covered in fondant and just painting that, I would use a larger brush, more like a flat brush, all right? I you can even use like a pastry brush, but also using the oil, it goes on very, very fluid, all right? So that is using the oil technique, all right? Now, so obviously here you've got the, um, the rose gold, so just to show you that again, so you can just sort of see the difference in the, in the colors. So this is the rose gold. Okay, and with rose gold, I'm going to use the, game we're going to use here. And you can see, I'm just going to paint a little bit of that, but you see how you get that beautiful, that sort of rose gold color on there. But see, the peach really makes a huge difference. The orange oil evaporates quite quickly, so just do sort of small amounts at a time. But literally, I could put this, just put this dish into a little zip top bag, and then next time I need the rose gold, that means you're not wasting it. You can just take this out and then you can use this, all right? Now, um, something else I do with the metallics is I will sometimes um, blend, blend metallics, all right? So if, for example, you wanted like more like a vintage silver, okay? So what I would do with a vintage silver, I would use silver, and I would use three parts silver. I'm just using here a little spoon, so one, two, three parts silver. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one part gold in there. And what that does, that's gonna warm up the silver so it looks a little bit more like a vintage French silver, you see? So then I'm gonna take just one part gold. And this will make like vintage French silver, all right? If you wanted to, for example, warm up the gold, you could use three parts gold and one part rose gold. All right, that again will give you, this is quite a yellowy gold, but if you want a little bit more of a sort of like a 24, you can actually use like the rose gold will warm up the gold. So you can play around with mixing those, uh, those colors, all right? And so then if you, if you were doing, so just gonna just mix this through. You can just 
mix the powder and then obviously you can just add the oil to this as you need to. And what I do here is I'm going to paint this one, but it's going to give you just like a slightly more of a vintage silver. It's not going to, it won't be quite as, it's got a little, it's not quite as um, sort of silvery. It's a little bit more as like a vintage silver. So if you were painting, um, you know, like letters and things like that, fleur de lis, you could use this technique. All right. So that is, that is actually mixing the colors. All right. So you can play around with mixing the different color combinations as well. So now the next option I'm going to show you is one I use for things that I want to handle. As I explained, with using the oil, all right, with using the oil once these are dry, if you handle them with your fingers, it's going to take the color off. So if you're using um, something like this onto a cake, you're always going to use gloves or you're going to use tweezers to attach that to the cake. All right, so um, that works really well. But as I said, it gives a very, very fluid look. So if I was doing a large surface area, I always use the orange oil technique, all right? If I was painting, for example, like metallic pearls, take them out of the mold, put them on wax paper, paint them with the orange oil and the gold or silver, and then I let them dry for 10, 15 minutes, pick them up with a pair of gloves on, put them on the cake, and then just pull the two end pearls off, and you have perfect pearls, all right? Um, now, the third option I'm going to show you is using confectioner's glaze, all right? So this is, for example, like the Confe Country Kitchen confectioner's glaze. Several companies have this. So confectioner's glaze is a food grade shellac, all right? What I recommend there is putting this into a little dropper bottle, all right? So you can use a little dropper bottle. Just put this into a dropper bottle. It makes it much, much easier to use. And then what you would do is, so if you're planning on doing this on a regular basis, you could use a little glass screw top jar. You could put it into a container like this, which is not air tight, but then put it into a zip top bag. And then when you reuse it, you can just add some more of the uh, confectioner's glaze to it. So I'm going to put some of the uh, gold into here. All right. So I'm going to put some gold into here into this container. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my orange oil, uh, sorry, my uh, confectioner's glaze. So just like I did the orange oil. So I've got this in a dropper. And what we're actually doing here is you're making like a lacquer. So think of it almost like a, a sort of a, a food grade version of nail polish, all right? So confectioner's glaze is food grade. Now, a couple of options we have here. You can use a brush like this, which you're gonna get at the dollar store. You use this, you just throw it away, all right? Because the confectioner's glaze is not water soluble. So if you're using a regular paint brush, like you're using a brush like this, when you clean your brush, all right, don't use water, what you'll need to do is you need to use like a confectioner's glaze thinner, an acetone, non-acetone nail polish remover, or even like isopropyl alcohol will work as well, all right? But don't put this in water, okay? So a lot of times when I travel, I just use disposable brushes, so it makes it easy to do. So I'm just gonna mix this up. You see how I'm actually just mixing this up? So what you'll end up with is you'll end up with this, like almost like a metallic, so you can see here, it's just a bit like a metallic nail polish, all right? And you can, I just need to put a little bit more of the glaze into here. But as I said, this keeps really well as long as you have it in a little airtight bottle or you keep it, and then it's always ready to use. So you're just going to mix this up, and you see how you have this like metallic, almost like sort of, uh, like a nail polish type of thing. So confectioner's glaze. Now, um, something else I use a lot for painting on, this is fun foam. So if you just go to the dollar store, you just buy, you know, like 20 sheets of this for a dollar because this stops thing moving things around, okay? Here I have a uh, little floral. This is a Katie Sue mold, but this is a nice one to use. So like, let's say your client wanted gold on the side of a cake. And then see, then what you'd actually do here is you'd brush this on with the gold like this. And this is also what you use for uh, when you're doing royal icing letters, because if you use, let's say, for example, you've done some pressure pipe letters in royal icing, you can't use the oil method because the oil will soak into the royal icing and basically will make the royal icing dissolve. OK, so but you see how I'm just using. But it also means if you have any little areas you don't get into, like if this was a cherub you're painting gold, it's not going to notice as much as in, plus you get that depth of color. All right, so you see how you're going to paint this over. So you're going to get the gold over the surface of this, all right? 
And so then what I would do is you just put the lid on this. So I said this would go into a little zip top bag and then next time I need this, all I would do is add a little bit more confectioner's glaze. You're not wasting anything then. All right, and then you would just clean your brush. You take a little bit of the glaze cleaner. Now the other thing is these little um, like portion cups for condiments and things, very useful. I use these for a lot. You can't use the orange oil in here because the acidic will actually melt the plastic, almost like eat through the plastic. So just use like a sort of a, like a little small plastic container or a little container. But you're just going to literally just going to just go over the surface of that. And you see, then you're just going to just clean, clean the brush. And then I would just generally just use a little bit of dish soap just to make sure there's no gold in there. And then obviously that will clean your brush ready to use because if you put it in water, it will just seize the gold um, or the silver uh, on the surface. But also when you're doing things like here, you can see I've got, and of course, if you're just doing something on a one-time basis, you can just use a little disposable pot like this. You could then just paint. So like if you were doing like a brooch, so this I would use like in the middle of a flower, a sugar flower. So here I painted with the silver, all right? Now I could also use the orange oil here because I don't need to handle that because then my gum paste petals will be, be attached to this. But uh, then of course you could just throw that whole thing away and then just wash your brush and you would be ready to go, okay? And uh, so that is using the metallic uh, with the uh, confectioner's glaze. So remember, a little dropper bottle is the best way to go because then you're going to not use too much. Now, once this is dry, all right, so once this is, these have dried, all right, so they take about usually about 15 minutes to dry. But uh, then it, what it means is, you see, I can handle this, all right, and you see how the silver won't come off on my fingers. This one I did just before I started the video. So you see, it's basically just dry. So that means you can literally just pick these up and put them onto your top of your cake, spread them out, a little bit of piping gel. This one, obviously, I've just done. So of course, this is still a little bit, I see I'm getting gold off there. But once that is dry, that gold will not come off, all right? So once you've actually, once it is dry, that will not come off. So that is very useful when you're needing to be able to physically have to handle something, to like push it onto a cake surface. And like if you were doing a lot of this type of element on the side of a cake, um, again, you know, sometimes the glaze method is better because it's easier to handle them and maneuver them and push them around rather than having to do everything with gloves on or using your uh, scissors. So that is so we've dealt with using the metallic with a little bit of vegetable shortening or coconut oil um, as like almost a gilding wax, which obviously gives a metallic look but not really shiny. Uh, next, we talked about using, obviously, the um, orange oil, the citrus oil. Um, that gives a beautiful metallic, but as I said, you can't use that on royal icing. And also remember, you have to use gloves or tweezers to handle. We've now talked about using confectioner's glaze, which gives us a, like, almost like a sort of a nail polish, like a lacquer that we can handle without the color coming off. All right, but remember, you have to take care of cleaning your brushes properly and it's not water soluble. All right. When I come back, I'm going to talk about also now creating a metallic icing using the highlighters. So now I'm going to show you how to make a metallic icing. Now this is a recipe I developed many, many years ago, and it offers an alternative to traditionally when you often write a happy 50th wedding anniversary on a cake. Uh, when I trained in my bakery tra training, we used to do that in white royal icing and then paint over the top, which is very easy to get the silver or gold onto the cake. So this is a metallic icing I developed. So what I do here is I take, um, you can do this in different amount. I'm using half a teaspoon of um, silver. So it could be gold, it could be the rose gold. You could obviously make the vintage silver effect as well. But a lot of times for like a 25th wedding anniversary or obviously a 50th wedding anniversary, you do gold. And then I'm gonna use the same amount of powder sugar, icing sugar, okay? So I have equal amounts of icing sugar and um, metallic powder, all right? Now then what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna mix these two together. So I'm just gonna blend them together. So this is the, so this is almost gonna make a, because a lot of people think you can just take royal icing and add the silver or gold to it. It was not gonna, actually it just looks gray. It's not gonna look metallic. So you just combine the equal amounts of sugar and the highlighter together. Um, then what I'm going to do is going to take some piping, some vodka, and uh, with my vodka here. So first of all, with the vodka. Now this obviously does have alcohol in it. Um, so, but you're going to take some vodka here, and again, I'm in a dropper bottle. I'm adding a little bit of vodka at a time. 
Now I have had a student um, who used water and it worked okay, it just takes a little bit longer to dry, but just use little drops of water, but the alcohol evaporates. And generally remember, like if you're using painting with vodka, you know, vodka you have a little bit more working time than you would with Everclear because Everclear is a high grain alcohol content like lemon in loosed in lemon extract. So what we're doing here is you're now just adding the vodka, just do this slowly. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a silver, like almost like a toothpaste consistency. See, I'm just mixing this through, but don't, don't put too much vodka in here, okay? But you see how this is coming together now nicely? So you just wanna create like a sort of a stiff paste. Now again, I have seen people use just piping gel with metallic in it, and that does work. All right, I've used that technique, but the thing is, is that the uh, having the sugar in there gives you a little bit more like a substance, like a royal icing consistency. So you see how, so now I have almost like a silver metallic paste, all right? Now then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take just a little bit of piping gel, all right? I'm just gonna put just a little bit of piping gel into there. Just gonna let you, there we go. Just gonna use it from here, actually. That's just a little bit of piping gel in here, just a few little drops until you get a sort of a pipeable consistency. This also, when you add the piping gel, really brightens it up as well. You're gonna get this nice, so see here now we have actually like a metallic ice in, okay? And uh, now when we use this product, all right, I'm just gonna just change out my here. You just remember, just work, you know, you can cover your surface with plastic wrap. You can use uh, just something so that you don't get the powder everywhere. Now, this can be used similar to the metallic um, with the confectioner's glaze. If you put this into, um, put a lid on here, put it in a little zip top bag, you can keep this for months and months. And then when you want to reuse it, you just would add a little bit more piping gel that would bring it back to the right consistency. So you can use this, for example, for piping. All right, so you could actually put this into a piping bag. Now you can see this is only a teaspoon because I did a half a teaspoon of each. So you just need a little tiny parchment piping bag, okay? Because if you're just writing happy 25th anniversary, you don't need a huge amount of this product. Of course, you can use a piping tip in here or we can just use a little bag like this. Just gonna cut the end off here. I'm just showing you here. So if you were right in see so you can actually write with the metallic do it happy here. And you see how that will give you perfect metallic lettering. So now, so if you were to write like happy Christmas, happy 25th wedding anniversary on a cake, and you slice this cake, somebody's gonna maybe get a little tiny bit that's not really a concern. Is that what I would not recommend is painting a whole cake with this, all right? Um, and uh, so then that's sort of how you would use uh, that as like for piping, but you can also use it, for example, to do like little, uh, you know, embroidery. You could do like little embroidery. So you're doing sort of like a henna style cake. You're doing little embroidered leaves and things like that. You can use this uh, for that. Gonna do like a little, of course you could do like little gold roses, but you can do, you know, so you can do all sorts of, uh, as I said, different embroidery techniques with this as well. So just really like how you use royal icing. Now, another thing you can use this for is if you were doing a wedding cake where the client wanted a monogram. So a lot of times when I do monograms, so I'm just showing you here on just on white fondant. So. I was doing like my last family name, which is Lodge. So I just would press this down onto fondant here like that. 
And then we're just going to just take your, I'm just going to use my little tiny spatula here. I'll just spread this over the top of this. Make sure you don't come over the top of the of the stencil there. I'm just going to clean your knife. Then you can use a little scraper or you can just use the little knife here to come across the top of this. And then I'm just going to use a toothpick or my little companion tool here. Just gonna just take the edge off of here, like so. And here you have perfect metallic stenciling, you see? So you see how beautiful that looks. So then what I could do is I could then cut that. Because a lot of times when I'm doing a monogram on a client's cake, what I would typically do is I prefer to do these off of the cake. So then I would do it like this. We'll cut it out with a square or round or oval cutter. Um, if it's going on a round cake, then what I do is I just dry this on the side of the cake dummy, and then you could attach this to your fondant cake. Of course, you can make it in a contrast color as well. And then you can then, um, of course, just pipe or use a little pearl mold around the edge of it. But that gives you, uh, shows you how to use. Um, so that is obviously using the piping um, icing, um, and obviously gives really nice techniques uh, to use for, as I said, for lettering for little embellishments, for obviously um, uh, stenciling onto cakes for monograms and things. And uh, so that um, has now shown you another way of using the highlighter. So I hope you've enjoyed this video showing how to use the amazing CSA line of highlighters and hopefully outlining obviously the different ways and applications of using these will give you a lot of scope. If you have any technical questions or questions about using the highlighter or any of the other CSA product range, don't hesitate to contact me through Facebook at Chef Nicholas Lodge or at chef at nicholaslodge.com. And uh, till next time, sweet wishes and have fun with your products.